Um, so do you have specific questions or just kind of? Um, yeah, I kind of had a few. All right. Let me just, ah, crap, sorry. Get rid of this abomination. All right. Um, so are the render questions or my questions? Um, I guess they're more like model specific questions. All right. I like uh, the texture. The one question I had was um, we're doing low poly. Mm -hmm. And like you can see towards the middle where there's like a bump in the center of the shield. The light kind of hits it weird. And uh, you get a kind of weird effect. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, there is a thing that you can do to fix this. Uh, I'm going to just, I guess, rotate. Uh, where am I going? Yeah, screw it. Haha, <laughs> cheating. Um, yeah, so there is a thing. Let me just see if it shows up in this particular, uh, particular view here. All right. Uh, is this textured? OK, I probably just need to set the project. Give me a minute. Um, but there is a thing that you can do. OK, it looks like kind of it's maybe showing up now. Um, where it's called soften edges. Um, all right, let's make the thing. I love how render Maya like refuses to render terribly when I want it to render terribly. Um, uh, that's not helpful. Is this the thing? All right. We have part of a thing. Um, all right, well, for some reason, this is much to my annoyance, rendering perfectly, more or less. Um, so I'm just going to see if I can sort of demo on like a sphere what I'm talking about. Um, but a short story, yes, there should be a way to fix that. Um, did you, I mean, first of all, did you do anything where you were like exporting maps from like Modbox or anything like that? Um, so if that's the case, I was thinking maybe it was like one of those settings where it's like uh, smooth UV, where if your model is designed to be smooth, if you like check that and then didn't smooth it, sometimes that'll make a weird effect. Um, if you didn't do that though, then that's probably not the issue. Um, all right. Sorry. Hi y'all. <sighs> Give me like ten seconds. I'm just gonna make a new scene. This is, and also turn off turn on interactive creation, because I cannot work without it, apparently. All right. Um, so I'm just going to make a sphere. And it's going to be like a real ugly sphere. I'm just going to say like eight sub divs. Like you can very obviously see like where those lines are. Um, so there is a thing that you can do if you're doing like a low poly game mesh um, to sort of, again, it's called soften edges. Um, so I just grab the whole object. Uh, if you go to mesh display, soften edge. Um, you can see that it kind of, like, it's, I haven't changed the model at all, like the exact same topology. Um, it just kind of, like, fakes the edges so that the shading on them isn't so harsh. Um, so I would try that on your model, if that's, um, and see if that works, because usually that'll fix that issue. Um, if it still happens, because I can't recreate it on my computer for some reason, uh, let me know and I can see if there's, like, other stuff um, to do with that. Um, but for the, the soften edges, you can also do that on specific edges. Like if I select just these edges here, um, you know, I can soften only these guys or like only these. It kind of just like depends on you. You can also set like different smoothing for each of those edges. Um, I had for my senior project, I did all the characters and then one of my other, one of the te teammates that did coding just like hung out for a few hours and like optimized all the edges so they smoothed really nicely because he found it relaxing. Um, and this is something that will port over into Unity or any other um, game engine that you do. Uh, so I say, especially if you have rounded objects, it is worth doing this because um, it will make your lighting appear a little bit smoother. Um, did you have any other questions? Like that sort of help? Um, no, okay. Help. Cool. Um, I like the textures on the shield. They look cool. Um, the bump maps are a nice touch. Um, all right, cool. Anyone else want to look at their projects or have questions? Cool. Soren? Yeah. Haha. Uh -huh. All right. Are you, it's SNS, yeah? Yeah. OK. I'm very, very, very slowly like actually learning people's names. All right. 
So as this unzips, did you have any specific questions or? Yeah. Um, like I had some issues then, and I, I fixed them here. I just want to know how the day and night lighting. So the, those ones are. Oh, like these are like the old it, ones. It should be, it should be uh, day three and night three. Uh, day three and night three. I see. Yeah. Um. Yo, the sampling looks totally better on these. Yeah. Um, dramatic improvements. Um, all right. So you just wanted feedback on like the the overall look of the lighting. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, like, I like it. I like the night one. Um, I actually really like that one, like, a lot. Um, so I think this one's kind of cool because you can see, like, very clearly, like, there's, like, not really much of any light coming in from the outside. And it looks like, you know, there's maybe, like, the area around the bar is a little bit brighter and, like, well lit. Um, I think what I might look at for, especially the night lighting, is maybe deciding uh is this is this it's like a saloon is there electricity at this point or no yeah okay um so i think maybe just decide on like i don't know for some reason i would expect the lighting to be to be a little bit yellower mm -hmm. um so you might play with the color temperature a little bit um but i think functionally like it definitely reads as being this is like more of like a night sort of scene than your day one. I would actually say for the daylighting, um, I might even, if not turn off, then maybe like lessen some of the interior lighting, maybe. Um, and I say that mostly because like if I toggle back and forth between them, there's like very, very little difference uh, between the, the highlights and stuff like that on the floors, if that makes sense. Um, and like even on the piano, like it's pretty much the same. Um, the same overall highlight. So is this, um, do you have any kind of like HDR on the, the background of this or is it just? Uh, I said, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I would go in and add that because um, that's definitely going to help certainly change the color of the light, but also um, give it, I guess, a little bit more variation in terms of like where the light is coming from for that. Um, and this is, this is like low poly game going to be an engine, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, I was totally going to be like, oh, you should put some environmental fog in. That would look really cool. And I'm like, I don't know if Unity has environmental fog because uh, it seems crazy labor intensive. But um, yeah, I think, I think, I think definitely the first thing I would do is like get some HDRIs in and then, or at least some like more targeted lighting. Because these guys, like the unmapped HDRIs give like super, super flat lighting most of the time. Um, but I think like, yeah, if you get some like light coming through and like certain, uh, like coming through some of these windows or something on the sort, on the corner, um, it would make some really interesting effects, especially with the little um, like window panes that you have in there. You get some really interesting shadows coming around. So it'll be something you might also consider leveraging. Um, yeah. Anyone else have any thoughts or comments or suggestions for the, the lighting? All right. Um, any other questions or was that? No. Cool. Um, all right, for the record, um, when we come back, I'm going to do uh, the week nine class is going to be mostly crit and then open lab um, to troubleshoot last minute stuff before the actual finals do. Um, so I'm totally going to make you guys participate more in crit next week, just for the record. Anywho, um, anyone else want to look at their uh, projects? Cool. And TEB, most of going crazy. Cool. Uh, oh my god, why? All right. Um, as this unzips, um, any specific questions or just kind of wanted feedback? Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to assume that most of the issue was with the little beaver guy. Um, all right, let's see what we got. Um, I definitely like the, I think the arms, I like the wrists especially, look nicer. Um, yeah, all right. 
so this, I mean, honestly, doesn't look completely irrational for the UVs. Was there a specific area you were having issues with? All right. Um, OK, so I guess just sort of trying to, all right, so I guess maybe just like joining these into more pieces. Yeah, I guess this is like a little bit like mushed, uh, mushed out. So I mean, first, th I think first thing I would do is probably just start with like all of these little, um, there we go. Um, all these little pieces that are like, almost connected but not quite connected and just like go through and attach all them together. Um, yeah, there's like, for the record, there's like literally no good way to ever do ears for anything. Ears are just always awkward. Um, but I go back and I think maybe do that on like all the pieces because it looks like um, there are just sort of some like random seams and then maybe usually, so usually for heads I'll go through and it's gonna get real weird, real weird for a minute. Um, so those guys, grab this, do a modify and fold. Um, and this one, honestly, isn't too, it's like a little weird, but um, normally I wouldn't advise putting seams like in the middle of the face, but I think you could actually get away with one under the tooth because it would be like fairly, not noticeable. Um, but I think also like where you put this here isn't too bad either. Um, normally, so normally for heads, um, I'll go through and like attach the whole front of the, the piece together and then come back and maybe cut down like the back portion of the head, just like straight down the back. Um, and that usually, usually puts in a seam in somewhere that's like reasonable enough um, where It'll allow the head to unfold reasonably and like not be like super crazy distorted, uh, and also to you know provide enough space for that to to seam in. Um, and then I think yeah, and then I mean at this point you can even go back and just like attach all this stuff together as well. Um, but I think I would just yeah, it seems like stitching pretty much most of the head together pretty much worked fairly nicely for this one actually. Um, I mean, so were you? You said you were having issues with the unfold tool and it was like behaving strangely? Yeah. Okay. Um, what exactly was it doing? Um, the little like stuff, like it would uh, have like, like sometimes it would do work where oh. like, the would be like, really weird mm. where it didn't have to be. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so sometimes the UV tool does that. Um, you can go through and um, like if you select a certain UV, if there's like a specific area that's behaving weirdly, you can grab those UVs, just those UVs themselves, um, and try doing an unfold on those. And sometimes you can kind of see that um, it's it's treating them like a little bit differently, just based on that selection. Um, you can also do there's an option. I think it's like modify relax or it's like relax UVs or something somewhere. Um, I'm like, oh, nope. Um, but yeah, so there's like a few options. Again, I think there's one that's called like relax UVs. I just for some reason can't find that one. Um, all right, totally an option for that. Um, you can also like worst case scenario, just like move them around kind of manually if it's like only a few that's wrong. I wouldn't do that for hundreds because that's horrifying. Um, the other thing, so if the, um, there is an option for a legacy unfold, which is basically the old algorithm for calculating unfolds, um, which my will be phasing out in newer versions. Um, they just sort of peg it as legacy. So if you ever see something like that, that's what it is. Um, but if you open up the tool settings for the unfold tool, um, you can see by default it's set to uh, unfold 3D, and this is like the new current version of the unfolding algorithm. Uh, if you set this to legacy, it will uh, behave, it'll basically do a different calculation of the unfold. 
Um, and you can see, I mean, this the old one doesn't do a great job maintaining the overall size of your UVs. Like, this head got shrunk really crazy. Um, it's not always that bad about it. So, like, sometimes if this one, I've had this one just be straight up broken before. Like, my would crash every time I tried to use it. Um, and I switched to Legacy, and then it was fine. So you could try that. Um, otherwise, I'll usually just kind of go in and like add different cuts here or there, or um, I might go in and just sort of like cut off a problem area, unfold it, and then like stitch it back into the original one, and then like kind of fiddle with the seam a little bit. But um, yeah, so I don't know. It didn't seem to be behaving super weirdly here. Um, but was that kind of helpful? Hopefully. All right. Um, did you have any more questions or issues, or? Base reference? Yeah, what the heck? Sure. Uh, what if we try MS Paint? Because this one totally looks more like the one that. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, for some reason I can't open this file. Um, is there one for the. Could I use the one for the Beaver? Like, is that. All right. All right. Right, that makes sense. Um, right, so that might be, my first thought is like maybe it's just like a thing where alpha, alpha is luminance wasn't checked. Um, yo, what the heck? All right, scary slow render. Um, all right, so I'm just going to like check the textures really quick. Um, uh, black color reload. All right, fine. Be that way. Um, all right, I'm just going to remap your. Oh, actually, no, Maya does that. Sorry. Um, So yeah, so I mean, the only real thought that I had was either like maybe the thing exported incorrectly or um, I know for a lot of stuff, so it looks like there is some like shininess showing up now. Um, so Alpha's Luminous is checked. Did it just sort of do something like this where it kind of looked like gross and Lamberty? Yeah. Um, make sure that Alpha's Luminous is checked. Um, I mean, it seems like it's perhaps the wrong shiny in the wrong areas now. Like it looks like the eyes are matte and the rest of it is shiny. Um, so I'm just going to do an invert, but yeah, it's really weird. Um, I'll also go through and maybe look at the, the map itself. Um, Cause if the, so I'm looking at this and this is like, this is like, actually pretty aggressive roughness. Um, so I'm, to be fair, I'm not entirely sure where the eyes are in here. Um, but like, uh, these values are basically, ah, what am I doing? It looks like more than like 50% gray. So this would be like fairly rough. Um, but yeah, so it could just be like a weird map thing. Also, um, the one thing, so uh, if you're in Mudbox, it also just occurred to me that uh, Mudbox works off of like specular glossiness and not roughness metalness, which is like the physically based rendering workflow. Um, so Maya uses different maps. So depending on what you painted in 
mud like if it looks if it looks correct in Mudbox, it's probably going to show up differently in Maya. Um, so that also could potentially be what's happening here. Um, but yeah, I can take a look at that more specifically. Like if you if you have the files up and can like recreate the the issue, I can look at that in Open Lab. Um, but yeah, any other questions with that or cool? Um, all right. Anyone else want to look at their stuff? All right. If this is the case, um, I will move on.